Welcome back. We are making pack two of our eventual Winchester draft based off of Commander Legends as generated by MTG Gen with mana costs and card types supplied by Scryfall. Our second pack is named Ashen Libraries, which now that I think about it seems very like Dark Souls Elden Ring, but eh, I'm okay with that. I never really, I haven't played those, but whatever. Libraries are cool. Our first card is a 5-mana white 2-2 two -two legendary creature human soldier. Ooh, legendary right off the bat. So this, this could be a commander. Aki Brooding Paladin. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, Aki Brooding Paladin gets plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn. Huh. Huh. If you're in like a like a spell slinger deck, you could get that pretty big, but it only lasts until end of turn and it starts at two. If this was counters, this would be really good, I think. Despite the fact that it's five mana and only a two two to start, it would just grow enough. It would probably be worth it. I don't think this one makes the cut for a commander. Uh, even though it is like a build around, it's just like not a very impressive one. For five mana? Mm, not impressed. Only the most potent spirits dwell here. In order to feed the titan's need for mana, Aki Brooding Paladin sacrifices all he has. Heirs of Aki, Volume 1. I love the flavor text that Urzea comes up with. That is such a, like, that, there, that, that, did anybody need a new D&D &D character? There it is, done. All the works, that, that's your character. It's, ah, it's so good. It's like a Paladin Warlock or something. Multiclass. Ah, beautiful. Blossoming Angel is a 5-mana 2-5 Phyrexian Angel. Ooh, very cool. Blossoming feels not what you'd expect from Phyrexian, but also I can imagine some, like, weird twisted Phyrexian Blossoming or it's just, like, some, like, pustule opening or something. Blah. It's a 2-5 with flying. For 3 mana and tap, you gain 2 life. Ah, again, not super impressive. 5 mana, 2-5. Even with flying, not amazing, but hey, when you're in draft, take what you can get. Though they give us shelter, we fear them more for what they can bring us. Phyrexian scriptures. Alright, cool. Ghost Form is a 1 mana blue enchantment aura. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature has base power and toughness 0, 1 and loses all abilities and powers of that creature. Okay, weird to say powers, that's not really a term that's used in magic, but yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, 0, 1, that is a very cheap, like, you know, frogify effect. It's good, I like it. The transformations come so quickly, Aki knew... They were not to be remembered. Wait a minute. I, th I think they spelled Aki differently here and there. But ignoring that, that's two cards in the same set referring to the same person. That never happens. The AI can't look at the other cards that it does. Alright, cool. Wow, okay. Very, very cool. Yeah, that's excellent. It's like a pacifism but it removes their abilities too very nice pearl wish moth is a four mana one three bird Ooh, it has flying and white regenerate pearl wish moth i like the name four mana one three again even though it's flying that's not a great stat line for for that mana cost but being able to regenerate is very nice it's just not a very appealing body for the bird they won't find him he will find them i don't know what pearl wish moth is up to but i wish you luck contemplative drake is a five mana two four drake this entire thing so far has been Pretty expensive flyers for very weird asymmetric stat lines. I do like that they're asymmetric stat lines. If we see a card that's like creature assigns 
pow like damage equal to its toughness instead of power or something that would be pretty cool that would be that would be pretty cool flying as long as you control a white creature contemplative drake gets plus two plus two and has trample you know what okay that's not bad Sorry, I spoke too soon. A 5-mana 2-4 with flying, not that impressive. A 5-mana 4-6 with flying and trample, that is impressive. Alright, alright, I like this card actually. Don't disturb the raven, he sees all. Fenwick Mumbline Cleric. Mumbline Cleric is a... I don't know, they just... it. That, mm, mm, I'm interested. Spire Swoop Hound is a 4-mana 3-3 three, three Phyrexian Dog. Who knew that Ashen Libraries would get the Ur get Urza's AI to make me Phyrexian cards? Didn't see that one coming. When Spire Swoop Hound dies, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. Huh, okay, so not, not, not impressive. Uh, it is 4-mana 3-3. Three, three. It has a little bit of graveyard hate, but the fact that it is... It's so slow, really limits it. Um, like, instant speed graveyard hate is really cool. You, someone can be like, I resurrect this from my graveyard. And you're like, cool, I exile it from your graveyard before it can be targeted by your ability or whatever. Like, that, that can be really powerful. Um, or even just, like, ETB, it does a thing. But the fact that this doesn't exile something from your graveyard until it dies... It's really limiting. Unless you play it just to sacrifice it or something. But still, that's a four-mana card. It's not terrible, though. It's, it's got a 3-3 three, three body, and it has utility. Like, Graveyard Hate is useful from time to time. It's just... Eh, it's not impressive. It has been years since the denizens of Phyrexia were driven from Spireswold. Spireswoop. Spireswold. Hmm. But the undead are never truly dead. That makes sense. Gatewatch Chaplain is a 1-mana one 1-1 one, one human cleric. It's white, it has a protection from red, and for white, Gatewatch Ca Chaplain gains first strike until end of turn. Huh. Not great. If this was just a 1-mana one 1-1 one, one with first strike, I think that would be fine. The fact that you need to pay for the first strike seems unnecessarily limiting, but eh. Eh. Okay. Osprey forces surge forth from their clifftops. Onward they come. Song of Osprey. Cool. Cool, 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 cool. Sword of Body and Mind is a 3-mana, 2-1 creature beast. It's red for red mana. Sword of Body and Mind deals 2 damage to target creature you control. You know what? If there's an Enrage deck in this, I'm going to be so happy. And you know what? Actually, since we're doing this Chaos Draft style and I'm naming each set as we go, I could make the next one have an Auroch sub-theme in its name and see what happens. Maybe maybe we'll make some Enrage things. Did I say Auroch? I meant to say Enrage. That's, a, that, that, that's called foreshadowing on accident. That's not, that's not what that means. One time I wanted to make an Aurox deck, so I said... Or say I make me some Orox, and they all had Enrage, and it was very funny. So, yeah, I'm going to make an Orox pack, I guess. It's going to be great. I'm excited for it. Uh, this is probably very bad and completely unplayable, but in the off chance there's an Enrage deck, it could be kind of fun. It was not a blade designed for gore or carnage. It was a sword of thought. Harbringer, Harbinger of the Hunt is a 2-mana, two 2-1 two human druid. It's green. When Harbinger of the Hunt enters the battlefield, target creature and opponent controls gets plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that's not good. I mean, you'll we'll play this on 2. You'll give something plus 1. You weren't going to attack anyway. It's completely a wash. It's not even a very big downside. But it's absolutely not, like... It, it's still just worse than a bear in every way like it's just it's just bad wherever my gaze falls a world awakens but we're gonna keep it those are the rules i'm using for this pack 
I guess if you're just joining us, you might not have heard that that is what I'm doing, because uh, I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to edit this together, if it's going to be one video or separate videos. So yeah, for today, we are only re-rolling broken cards, the ones that literally don't function, not cards that are too low or too high in power level. Pyromancer is a 5 mana 2-2 two -two black wall. For 3 mana, sacrifice Pyromancer, it deals 2 damage to target creature. It is weird that this is a wall. It's weird that it does that since it's a wall, it doesn't have defender. It's way too expensive for its stat line. Yeah, this is just wow. This is mmm. Mmm. There's a part of me that really wants to reroll, but I'm gonna commit to it. I really want to see like what the final result looks like if you just let it keep in all of the bad stuff. Especially since I've kind of realized I don't have a great assessment of power level. I've been playing, like, the the current most recent set in Magic, and there are cards that I'm like, that's a real card? Really? That sucks. Like, I, I don't know what is reasonable, so I'm happy to leave it in and see what the draft environment looks like. This is an experiment. Everything's an experiment. The Raven of the High Pyramids knows the wards of Ashen Dawn and the Eternal Glow of Sardarath. Hmm. Okay. Quirion Enforcer is a 3-mana 2-2 two -two legendary creature human rogue. For tap, target creature you control gains vigilance until end of turn. Attacking doesn't cause it to tap. Cool. This is fine. It's not a very impressive legendary creature. Few things. One, Quirion Enforcer doesn't sound like a legendary name. We're, we expect legendary creatures to have, like, a, a name and then, like, a comma and then, like, an explanation of, like, who they are. That's, like, the usual format. If you don't have that format, it usually is just, like, a name. And it stands on its own. It doesn't need, it doesn't need an explanation. Unless this person's name is first name Quirion, last name Enforcer... It doesn't really feel legendary, but that's fine. What you're going to do? I'll do that sometimes. Other than that, a three mana two, two is not good stat line. Tapping to give something vigilance is kind of cool. There's something potentially useful for that. Like vigilance is a strong ability and this is cheap enough that it's not so limiting that it's only like a tap ability, but it's not super impressive. Eh. A mage and his blade have no equal. When the god smiles, my blade has an answer for him. I think it's worth pointing out that Commander Legends is a set which expects you to be using the partner mechanic. Uh, partner mechanic being that commanders with partner can be a second commander with other commanders with partner. So you can have two commanders. So the ones that are like single color like this, this might be a fine partner commander even though it's not a very good solo commander. Yeah, might be fine to have this in addition to some other commander's effect. So that's kind of cool. But this card does not have partner. It's possible that when we play this, we'll just give all of the monocolored things partner. We could do that. That might work. I didn't really think about it. That that might be a fun thing to do. I'll have to talk with my partner about it and see if she wants to do that. But um, otherwise, I wasn't planning on that. I was planning on having a stand in card that could kind of partner with anything uh just to add some color i i basically i have a custom idea for a card that i i think i'm gonna make as a custom card and we'll just use that in the set but we shall see we shall see a mage and his blade have no equal when the god smiles my blade has an answer for him finality is a three mana white instant Destroy target non-artifact, non-echo creature. What? <laughs> I mean, okay, a few things. I like the idea of echo as a type, right? Non-echo, I feel like the actuality that means like a creature that's not an echo like a non-angel creature or something right um there's there are kill spells that have that kind of precedent 
But echo is a keyword that some... It's a keyword that some creatures have. It means that uh, you have to pay for it on your next turn as well, or it gets sacrificed. And I think that's kind of interesting. The idea of being like, oh yeah, you can't kill things that have that specific mechanic. But if that was the case, it would be something like saying, kill a creature with flying, as opposed to kill a flying creature, right? Um, so in this case, it would have to read something like, destroy target non-artifact creature without echo <laughs> which would be, it'd be, it'd be ridiculous to have that as a card but it'd be funny i guess only death brings silence awesome gazan Corum, angel of retribution cool i don't know how many times you're going to see an artifact creature in this set so this card's probably just as good as a murder but it's in white seems good to me Echo Scepter is a two-mana colorless artifact. Tap, target player gains one life. Unless there's life gain payoff, that's not that impressive, but okay. It can go in any deck. There's no place quite like Echo Spire. Not even Echo Spire itself. For it is more a song than a place. Ashen Verse. <laughs> what? <laughs> No place like Echo Spire. Even Echo Spire is not like Echo Spire. Echo Spire is not even a place. It can't be like anything. Like, okay, sure. I, I guess. <laughs> it's like saying, I guess there's, there's no place like, insert your favorite song here. The song isn't even a place like that song. Because it's not a place. I guess that checks out, actually. Weird. Ashen Favor is a 5-mana green sorcery. Search your library for up to 3 cards. Reveal them, put them into your hand, then shuffle. Oh. Oh. Okay. Interesting. Huh. If... So, because we're only making cards for a draft environment you probably don't have a three card win the game combo in your deck you might it's entirely possible we'll make a three card win the game combo and you might be able to even draft it that would be cool even if you don't this is still pretty good five mana draw three but it's uh, the best three cards in your deck yeah that's actually that's pretty okay i i think that's that's fine even without some game breaking combo but if you put this into, like, an actual constructed format, that is, yeah, that, that can just draw you a game-winning combo. That's that's pretty good for only five mana. I think that in the last set that I made with Earth's AI, there was, like, a seven mana card that did that, and people in the comments still thought it was probably probably too strong just because, I mean, you're going to find yourself a three three card combo and just wins the game. The gathered riches became ashes, leaving a mere hint of the vanished bounty. Chalice of Life is a two-mana white sorcery. You gain two life. That's really bad. And then we die, as we as all must, Phyrexian verse. So, it's funny, like, you look at that flavor text and you think, oh, that doesn't make sense. This card's about gaining life, not about dying. But if you're spending your time just to cast a spell to draw to gain you two life and nothing else, yeah, you're gonna die, turns out. <laughs> Artisan's Refuge is a one-mana red sorcery. Assemble an enchantment in the assembly area of your choice. You gain three life. At the beginning of your upkeep, put an enchantment card from your hand onto the battlefield under your control. All right, let's talk about it. We got a card to talk about. Um, this card's cool in that it doesn't do anything, but it's evocative, and if you wanted to do custom magic, it might be a fun place to jump off from, uh, if, if that's something that you were interested in doing. Assemble an enchantment. That doesn't mean anything. Now, it does follow the same... Um, verbiage as assemble a contraption which was a joke mechanic from an unset uh technically now that's something interesting to point out is that technically there was a card that could 
I think, maybe, yeah, I think so, there was a card in real magic that could assemble a contraption. It just was referring to cards that didn't exist, right? It was made for Future Sight, the idea being that these are cards from Magic's future where there's new mechanics, and they just included a, a, a mechanic that wasn't real and they never intended to make real. So there is weirdly precedent for cards that tell you to do stuff that doesn't make sense. You just can't you can't follow through on because there it's not a thing now i don't think that's something we want to do here i think we're going to drop this into like this card doesn't work pile and even if we didn't there's a second reason we need to drop this in the this doesn't work pile but let's continue so assemble an enchantment if you assumed you had a deck of cards such as the contraption deck that said like yeah there's a keyword called assemble and you could assemble take a, the top card from your contraption deck and put it onto the battlefield. Um, you know, we do have precedent for what assemble is. Assemble means take the top card off of the deck that is being referred to by the effect, assemble a contraption, a top of the contraption deck, and put it into play. Cool. So even though it doesn't make any sense, we do have precedent for it. There just is no enchantment deck, so it would fail every time. I'm fine. I'm going to ignore that. Fine. Assemble enchantment in the assembly area of your choice. Now we're getting to a new situation. What's an assembly area? There's no assembly areas. Now, if the implication here is that, like, they mean, like, just any zone you wish, like, assemble a contraption not into the battlefield, but into a graveyard or into a hand, I guess that could work. But again, this is players adding opinions onto it, which we're trying to make cards that just play as is, no interpretation required. So we're not going to be using it, but... Interesting to think about like what that could mean. You get through it. Then it's got a second ability here. And this is the this is the important one that actually makes this card broken. At the beginning of your upkeep, put an enchantment card from your hand onto the battlefield under your control. That is a static effect. That is an effect that would go on a permanent. And the reason we know this is because it doesn't say at the beginning of your next upkeep. It's not a floating effect that's waiting for resolution. It's just always true while this card is on the battlefield. So as a sorcery, it doesn't work. It just doesn't work. So there you go. That's my assessment of this card and why we're re-rolling it. Otherwise, it's kind of cool. You know, if it would just said at the beginning of your next upkeep put an enchantment card from your hand on the battlefield under your control this card would be incredibly strong just one mana put any enchantment from your hand on the battlefield next turn pretty good also gains you three life as a, a, a little bonus and if you were playing with an enchantment deck and the assembly area was a defined field then it doesn't even another another thing whatever that happens to be not that we know what it is anyway uh cool one craft is not enough for this task Vivian Reed, Mercenary. Let's see what we can do. Disperse is a one mana red sorcery. Disperse deals two damage to each creature without flying. I'm into it. I think that's fun. The idea that the flyers get to survive. More creatures are going to be non-flyers than flyers probably, so it's probably a more useful card. I always love flying hate because flying is just... Flyers are so strong, especially in Limited, that having Flying Hate always feels really good. I'm like, that's cool. Things that can, the fact that a Flyer gets away, it's not just like, oh, it doesn't... Like, a, 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 a spell that kills any creature is better than a spell that kills only a Flyer. But a spell that can only kill non-Flyers... It's less interesting to me. It's probably more powerful than a spell that can kill only Flyers. Death to thieving, trickery, and theft. The Testament of Skate. Rebel Scribe. Rebel Scribe! Bing, bing, bing. Rune Horn Behemoth is a 2-mana, two 2-2 two, two green creature lizard. Ashen lizards you control get plus 1, plus 1. If that just said lizards you control, this would be very cool. Ashen Lizards means nothing. That means absolutely nothing. In the verbiage of the game, in my understanding of it, correct me if I'm wrong, this would mean creatures that are both Ashen and Lizards, right? That's like saying Dwarven Clerics, or I guess it would be the other way around. It would be like Cleric 
dwarfs or whatever you control get plus one plus one if something is both a dwarf and a cleric it gets plus one plus one uh so here it would have to be both be a lizard and ashen and that's just i mean i hope i see a card that says that it is an ashen but i don't see i don't expect it for two mana put a sphinx counter on rune horn behemoth for two mana, create a 1-1 one, one green Sphinx creature token with Defender, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, create a token that's a copy of it. Okay, um, so a lot of text that says kind of nothing, and then one actually pretty good ability. A two mana 2-2, two, two, fine, you got a normal grizzly bear, love it. And then, you can spend two mana, no tap even required, so if you have the mana, you can do it infinite times, so that's cool to make 1-1 one, one green sphinxes. Cool. Why not? Why are they sphinxes? Don't worry about it. Who cares? This lizard's making sphinxes. They have defender. Oh, wait. <laughs> okay, they have defender. I kind of missed that part. Um, they can only block as currently written. Now, to be fair, there are cards that exist that say creatures with defender can attack as though they didn't have defender. Are we going to see any? Probably not. But if we do, I'm going to be so excited. I'm going to be so excited if we see that mechanic in this in, in this in this pack, or even in this in the whole draft pool. Again, that's what we're doing. We're not making a set. We're not making a draft. We're making a draft pool. Anyway, if we see that mechanic, that'll be the coolest thing. Because right now it has defender. It can't attack, and that's a problem because it says whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player create a token that's a copy of it in this case i believe the it is the sphinx token not the player hopefully they don't mean the player that would be weird um i'm gonna rule that that doesn't mean that so making of infinite like copies of itself by attacking and making a second one and then both those attack and then they make another like it's, it's gonna scoot swarm off now way slower than scoot swarm which is good because scoot swarm is strong um but it has defender so it's probably never going to successfully do that oh well her barks razor sharp horns her pelt is crafted from the scraps of the titans pradio simic ermage ha huh. Charred Visage is a 4-mana colorless artifact. Charred Visage enters the battlefield tapped. Tap, add, black, or red. That's a pretty bad mana rock. In draft, you might be happy to run it just because you're in draft and you don't have so many options. I think it's still probably not worth it to spend 4 mana on a, on a tapped mana rock like this. Just... I think you'd, you'd rather just not have it in your deck, even in limited. But I could be wrong. I'm not sure. The face of Medomai, the diviner, went blank, and its spirits fled, leaving behind only the charred visage. Cool. Wanderer Monk is a 3-mana 2-2 two -two red human monk. When Wanderer Monk enters the battlefield, put a quest counter on it, and create a 2-2 two -two red devil creature token with flying. Whenever you gain life, put a quest counter on Wanderer Monk. So right now the quest counters don't do anything. But that's, you know, whatever. That's fine. Um, three mana to make two 2-2s, two -twos, one of which has flying, is pretty cool. Okay, yeah, I, I, I like that. I think three mana make two twos, two two twos where one has flying is probably good enough. Sounds good to me. My god, how does one fight such a foe? If only there were more of me. Tycho's Samite Abbot. If only there were more of me. Wonder Monk made a red devil. They did not make another of themselves. Maybe that's the flavor there. They, like, tried to make a duplicate of themselves and summoned a devil instead. Hmm. 
Apex Acrobat is a 3-mana, 2-2, colorless artifact creature construct. It has flying and protection from creatures your opponents control. Oh, that's awesome! Wait a minute! They did it! They solved protection! I don't like protection usually. I've talked about this many times on the show. Usually because it's color-based, and color-based means that half the time it just doesn't come up because you're just not playing against a deck that has that color in it, right? Um, so it's just kind of a weird, from a power level standpoint, of like how strong should something with protection be if you're not playing against that color, and how strong should it be if you are playing against that color, right? Just being actually unblockable or whatever is it usually feels more appropriate. Anyway, um, the idea of saying protection from creatures your opponent's control is just really funny. It also means that if you have an, like, an onboard trick that is like, you know, uh, a tap ability, give a creature plus two plus two, you can target your own creature. Whereas normally, if this is a protection from creatures, your creature couldn't target this with even with a buff even. Because protection is weird. Um, protection just means can't be targeted. Not like can't, you know, have negative effects. Because how would you define that, right? It glides from apex to the next best apex. <laughs> Ah, uh, the next best apex is such a funny phrase. I love that. <laughs> the next best apex. The best best thing. Amazing. I like that card. I think that's great. Uh, it's a 3 mana 2-2 two, two flyer with upside. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. It's also an artifact creature, so it can't be killed by that kill spell we saw. <laughs> All right, that brings us to the end of the second pack. Let's look back and see what would make a good drawing from this pack. The legendaries didn't super jump out to me as like the most interesting parts. I like the Wanderer Monk. I thought that was interesting. Uh, the Runeborn Behemoth was also kind of cool. I don't know exactly if that's going to be like relevant, but eh, it could be interesting. Honestly, it was kind of a bland pack overall in my opinion, but that's okay. That, ha that happens. That's part of the experience. So... Quirion Enforcer is our 3-mana 2-2. Two, two. It can give something Vigilance for tapping itself. Pretty mediocre. Not not very impressive, and also, well, it's, it's one color. It's not, not very cool. Um, other than that, eh, what sort of body and mind do again? Deal 2 damage to our creature you control. Again, if there's Enrage, could be useful. Until then, not really. Otherwise, uh, Phyrexian Dog is pretty funny. I don't think it's very good, but it's interesting. Uh, I did like Contemplative Drake. And honestly, I could imagine a drawing for that. That's something I would enjoy drawing. Just this Drake that's very, like, introspective. <laughs> I ended up going with the Contemplative Drake. Not the most interesting choice, honestly. Uh, maybe I should have committed to only drawing the legendaries. That could have been pretty cool. Aki was actually pretty interesting of a character being his brooding paladin there was a lot to do with that from a drawing perspective the card just was so lackluster it just seemed not worth the effort for contemplative drake weirdly enough this isn't the original idea i had when i started when, when, I, when I first looked at the card, I was thinking a lot more like The Thinker, or actually, weirdly enough, I was thinking of Nicol Bolas, right? The original art for Nicol Bolas is very contemplative Drake. What I ended up drawing is a lot closer to, like, a Dragonborn. I have so many opinions about Dragonborn. I still think they should never have been dragons, right? Not just because in fiction, right, Dragonborn aren't dragons, they're different things. Not just because of that, but because dragon is such an important typing, right? Dragons are supposed to be these big things that are very impactful, and if you need something that cares about dragons, it, it's not easy to get them all the time. You really need to invest the mana into some sort of big thing. But dragonborns are small, and what's interesting is that we already have a typing for that. It's Drake. Drake is just kind of like the small dragons that don't count as dragons. Dragonborn should have been Drake. So here we have a, a contemplative Drake that looks a lot more like a Dragonborn. 
maybe that's silly. I know that would be really misleading for players who are new and don't know anything about Dragonborn and are like, wait a minute, this is a Drake, not a dragon? Dang it. Like, I, I get it. From that standpoint, it makes total sense that they didn't code Dragonborn that way, but I'm still bitter because I'm a Grognard. Anyway, <laughs> that's actually talking with this drawing. Um, yeah, I ended up going a lot more Dragonborn. I don't know why. Like, I really liked the idea of this big winged drake that's just thinking about fat thoughts. A lot like how sphinxes are depicted, right? These big, massive, like, quadruped things that are just thinking all the time and not really doing much. And instead, I ended up just going with this weird little, like, art student drake lady i don't know it was it was weird i don't have a good answer for anything um i gave them some books and some scrolls uh you know yep when i threw in the highlighting right here i did want to make sure i was hitting some scales so you don't just have these like solid lines of white they're instead sort of broken up to, to reflect that thought it worked once again i throw in a multiply layer this time blue to sort of bring out those colors I think it maybe worked. I'm not entirely sure. I'm also not entirely sure if they're just like naked here or if they're wearing like a weird like sleeveless sweater. It's it's unclear. It, it, it's up to interpretation and I'm okay with that. <laughs> but yeah, that's my interpretation of Contemplative Drake. I'll see you all in the next one.